Thank you for participating in this training to be approved as a 4-H leader in the Wyoming 4-H program. This is one of several short narrated lessons you will need to finish to complete new leader orientation. Each lesson is between 6 and 15 minutes in length. The lesson ends with a brief evaluation, and once you have submitted all of the evaluations, you will receive an e-invite from the State 4-H office for consent to complete volunteer screening. This session will review the purpose of 4-H, some background about 4-H, your role and responsibilities as a 4-H leader, and what we can do to help you be as successful as possible in that role. For this session, it will be helpful to have the following handouts, the 4-H background, the volunteer leader flyer, policies, training, and screening. The purpose of 4-H is to help youth acquire knowledge, develop life skills, and form attitudes that will enable them to be self-directing, productive members of society. This is accomplished by providing educational projects and activities. The mission and vision are accomplished by incorporating the essential elements of positive youth development into our 4-H programs. You may be familiar with the Big M. If not, we will cover it in another session. The focus of 4-H is on learning that occurs throughout the 4-H year in project work and club meetings. Fair and other competitions are a great opportunity for members to show their skills if they choose to attend, but should not be the entire focus of the youth 4-H experience. 4-H is really about building Blue Ribbon kids, not necessarily Blue Ribbon projects. The 4-H year begins October 1st and ends September 30th. Youth are eligible to enroll, enroll at any time during the year. However, some 4-H activities may require a deadline to sign up. These deadlines for club enrollment, contest, fairs, and camp may help with planning or to make sure a member can, can attend enough workshops to meet the educational requirements. 4-H age is calculated on January 1st. That means you could have two 8-year-olds in your 4-H club. But if one of the eight-year-olds has a birthday before January 1st, their 4-H age would be seven, and they would enroll in the Cloverbud Project. The other eight-year-old's 4-H age would be eight because their birthday was after January 1st, and they would be a junior member in the traditional 4-H program. A 4-H member's age can be very confusing. Just remember the January 1st rule. Different opportunities are available for different ages. Cloverbuds are for younger 4-H members, and the Cloverbud project is non-competitive. Youth do age-appropriate activities and have a show-and-tell outcome. Cloverbud opportunities vary by county, so check with your 4-H educator about programming for Cloverbuds in your county. In the traditional 4-H program, junior members are between 8 and 10. Intermediate members between 11 and 13, and senior members are 14 to 18 years of age. Remember, that's their 4-H age. 4-H age is something that is non-negotiable and cannot be altered. Children who have to wait an extra year to join the traditional program because of a late birthday will also get to participate through the 4-H age of 18, even if they have already graduated from high school. We are excited you are interested in becoming a 4-H volunteer leader, and it's important to understand our expectations. Please pay attention to deadlines which affect your club and its members. We also want volunteer leaders to spend time sharing what they know with members and parents. Youth enroll in 4-H because it's fun, and they want to learn something specific, like photography, sewing, robotics, or animal science. That learning happens through project meetings. It is important for leaders to model good ethics and responsibility. All leaders and members sign a code of conduct when they enroll, and they can be held accountable to those standards. Another area where you can also provide a lot of help to members is with their portfolio. If you are a 4-H alumni, you will remember them as record books. Portfolios teach members many valuable skills. They are also a great way for youth to see how far they have come in the 4-H program. Many counties have awards based on portfolios, and they are judged in various ways. Portfolios are used to evaluate youth for many national trips and scholarships. Keeping portfolios from past years will allow a youth to see how they have grown in the areas of projects, leadership, and community service. 
These can be especially helpful when they are completing scholarship applications. Here is a list of some of the responsibilities 4-H leaders have. Keep up on communication. Communication from the county office may come in many forms. It may be a traditional hard copy newsletter delivered to your mailbox. It could be an electronic newsletter, a county email distribution list, a county 4-H Facebook page, or a county 4-H website. Find out how you will get communication and updates by asking your county 4-H educator. When you know what's going on, you can involve parents and ask them to help with the workload. When you know what's going on, parents will also feel comfortable with you. If you are unsure about something, please ask. When you know what's going on, you can focus on making a positive impact on youth. Statewide policies are in place to ensure a safe environment for all youth and adults who participate in the University of Wyoming Extension 4-H program. Providing a safe environment for youth and adults in the Wyoming 4-H program is our highest priority and achieved through appropriate screening and training. These requirements are outlined in the Volunteer Leader Flyer, Policies, Training, and Screening. This new leader orientation you are watching is part of the training requirement. It's important for you to understand your role and responsibilities as a 4-H leader. After you have finished watching all of the online sessions, remember to set up a meeting with your county 4-H educator. They will want to get to know you personally. The screening includes two background checks. The criminal background check, which is conducted every five years, and the motor vehicle record check, which is completed annually. UW policy requires individuals who drive on university business to complete the motor vehicle records check each year, and 4-H is university business. This applies to all driving, whether doing so in your personal car, a rental vehicle, a county vehicle, or a UW vehicle. Once the training requirements have been completed, it's time to initiate the volunteer screening. Your County 4-H educator will let the State 4-H office know when it's time to send you the e-invite for volunteer screening. To protect your privacy and ensure confidentiality, it is best for you to submit your information online. Your personal information will not be kept in the County Extension Office or the State 4-H office. Screening of the criminal background check will include convictions of child endangerment, crimes of a sexual nature, a felony involving violence, and financial crimes. Individuals who have ever been convicted of a crime against children or a vulnerable adult, a crime of a sexual nature, or a felony involving violence will not be approved as a 4-H volunteer leader. In addition to the criminal background check, the motor vehicle records check includes moving violations and at-fault accidents in the past 12 months and any major convictions in the past 36 months. A flagged MVR check may result in restrictions to the 4-H volunteer leader's approval to transport 4-H members who are not their own children. All information gathered in the screening process is considered private and will remain confidential and will only be released as required by law. We are here to provide you with resources and training so you can be as successful as possible in your volunteer role. Volunteer trainings will be offered every year, and you are encouraged to participate in as many as you like. To comply with the statewide leader training requirements, a volunteer leader must attend a training at least once every five years to continue to be approved as a 4-H leader. Participation in any of these trainings will also meet this requirement. County 4-H educators in the State 4-H office are here to help you. Let your County 4-H educator know if there is specific training you would like. If you need help as a leader, it is important to communicate that with your 4-H educator. They would be happy to provide you with training or direct you to a resource that could help. There are many ways that parents can help support the 4-H program. Just ask how they might like to get involved. Check with your accountant to see if you can deduct your 4-H expenses. Some stores and businesses also offer discounts to 4-H members and leaders for project-related materials and services. If you need help with club chartering or you are working with 4-H members who need help with portfolios, contact your 4-H educator. A 
Upon completion of the steps to be approved as a FOIA volunteer leader, you will be entered into the state data management system. At that point, you are entitled to protection under the University of Wyoming's general liability and insurance programs. As long as your approval as a FOIA volunteer leader is current, you follow the expectations outlined in the behavior agreement form, you have obeyed all applicable laws, regulations, procedures, and you are acting within the scope of your approved role as a 4-H volunteer leader. For example, there are specific training requirements for 4-H shooting sports leaders. If you are leading a 4-H shooting sports project and have not received the state training required by 4-H Wyoming 4-H, you would be acting outside the scope of your role. Or if you are transporting members other than your own children to a 4-H activity and you have not submitted the consent for a motor vehicle records check, you have broken a UW policy. If you have specific questions about the scope of your role, please visit with your county 4-H educator. Thanks for completing this orientation. Please remember to go to the State 4-H website and complete the evaluation there. Also, once you have completed all of the lessons, remember to set up an appointment to meet with your County 4-H educator. Yeah.